Hello everybody, this is Joey and making a quick video here. I haven't made a video in quite a long time, but <clears throat> I had something interesting to show you. <laughs> it's a, a clock radio that I got when I was in high school. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry, you're seeing my mess of a desk here. Um, <clears throat> it's clock radio and, uh, let me... Put the top back on it here. Okay. So it was a clock radio I got when I was in high school. And recently, and it's worked well. So let's see, I graduated high school in uh, 20, or when I was 17, and I'm 43 now. So it's at, you know, it's probably at least 26 years old. I don't remember exactly when I got it. Uh, so, pretty, uh, until now, it's caused me no issues whatsoever. Uh, and the most recent issue is that when I, uh, uh, the radio piece, uh, cause I mostly just use it as a radio now, and the radio piece stopped working, and I, re I, uh, I hate that it stopped working because it's a, it's a really good, uh, ra radio receiver, so... Uh, I popped it open, and, uh, uh, oh, let me, uh, first, it's a, a GE model 7-4634B, I think, on the bottom it has a B on the model number, yeah, so, obviously, I'm in the United States, and, um, Uh, so it's a it's a 200, 240 volts, 60, 60 hertz, 4 watts, all that. So, uh, so here's the inside of it. Um, and wow, it's really dirty. <laughs> of course, I've never opened it in 20-something years. So here's the underside of the top piece. So these these things are a little... Or little buttons that uh, that press down on these tabs here, and then they go to these little wire contacts. So, uh, yeah, it definitely needs a cleaning. There's hair in there, and just dirt and grime. And I'll, but I popped it open mainly to see if any of the caps needed to be replaced. They all look okay. It doesn't look like any of them have exploded. I, I haven't fully taken it apart yet. Um, I just took the pop, popped the top off and thought, man, I should get a video of this. Um, a lot of people probably never seen the inside of a radio. Um, but yeah, uh, this is like a late 80s, early 90s tech here. <laughs> Uh, there's some kind of, uh, don't have a good pointing, oh, didn't mean to do that. So, um, uh, move my mouse out of the way so I don't accidentally click again. So there's, um, how do I point this? Under here there's like a little, um, integrated circuit right here where the, 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 sorry, trying to get this situated, um, where the tip of the screwdriver is. So there's an integrated circuit there. There's one over here of some kind. And <clears throat> I'm not sure what's on the bottom of this board. Uh, could be any number of things. So, uh, I think this right here, uh, this piece here must be the antenna. Uh, here's some... Uh, uh, I don't know what these... Uh, some sort of... Uh, something to do... Probably the radio tuning and maybe this thing as well up here. Um, I don't know. There might be a schematic or a guide on... Online somewhere. Uh, here's like a transformer to take the... Uh, 
take the power and step it down, I'm sure. Um, they have an interesting strain relief system here. So this is a, one of the screw holes right here. And you can see the cable comes in the back here. And then it goes into a little slot and wraps around. Uh, I thought that was a pretty unique and interesting way to do strain relief. And uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I looked at all the caps that are on the top side and none of them are in bad shape. Uh, after 26 years, you know, you might expect a cap to start going bad or something like that. But so far, none of them have. Uh, the, the main symptom I'm having right now is uh, that the... Uh, when I turn the radio on, it'll just kind of give me static on a particular channel. And um, so I don't, and then it kind of cuts in and out. So I, I don't know what the real problem is with that yet. I'm going to have to see if I can dig around in here a little bit and figure it out. But, uh, and here's like the, this part right here where my finger is pointing, that's the LCD panel and it connects via ribbon cable into this uh, thing. So there's obviously something going on the underside of this board and there's screws that I'll have to take out. So uh, right there, there's a screw and uh, probably some more on here somewhere, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and then take everything apart and see if I can fix it. But I thought it'd be interesting to see the inside of a clock radio. Hey everybody, this is Joey and um, I wanted to do a follow up. I checked the uh, my clock radio that I showed um, previously. Uh, it's been a few days since I recorded last on this. So I cleaned everything up. I cleaned up the board kind of as best as I could. And I cleaned all the dust off the speakers. And I washed all the plastic parts. Uh, just used water and a toothbrush, soft toothbrush. And uh, I re-oiled the parts that needed oiling. And uh, I plugged it in and it seems to work. So I think maybe it just needed to be cleaned up. I checked all these caps, and despite being 20 years old, um, they seem to be in pretty good condition, and they don't, I don't see any leakage or, like, you know, chemical leakage anyway, uh, on any of the caps, the electrolytic caps, and, uh, of course, I didn't mess with any of the tuning or anything, it's, pretty much already tuned so I mainly just cleaned it and put it back together and um, so and it seems to work so I don't know maybe another 20 years I'll pop it back open and clean it again <laughs> so um, anyway just wanted to let everybody know I am gonna close it up and finish it and then I'll be done Hey everybody, here's my clock, here's the bottom of the clock radio, and I noticed something as I was putting it back together. You can see that transformer down in there, and so there's like a plastic shield on the transformer, and I'm wondering if I put it on upside down. So I gotta open it back up and fix that, I think. Okay, here we are back again. I got it all put back together. So apparently I reviewed the footage and that must have been like that all along. I mean, I mean, obviously that's for ventilation. So that piece must get a little bit warm. But also, uh, you know, little kids could stick, uh, or even adults could stick screwdrivers down in those holes and come in contact with 240 or uh, 120 volts. So, I'm um, not really sure if that's completely safe, but this is this clock radio is kind of um, from 
probably a different era. Things are much more safe now. And uh, and th this, this clock radio is actually very safe. But some of the older clock radios and things like that, the, especially the vacuum tube stuff, were... Um, you know, one manufacturing mistake uh, could make the whole chassis live with electricity, and when you touch it, you die. So, um, or if you just stick your fingers in the back of it or something, it could be get in poorly. So uh, anyway, it works. Um, the radio works. I won't play any of the radio because I don't want to get copyright striked or anything like that. But. Uh, the radio does work, seems to work fine. The only thing that doesn't work is the little indicator here. I mean, it works, but it's a little jerky, herky-jerky. Not as smooth as it once was, so. Uh, but that's, uh, I don't know, maybe, I, you know, in 20 years, I'll pop it back open and, and try to fix that. Uh, so, anyway, that's it. It's back together. It seems to work. Everything's good. Talk to you later. Bye.